Edit Model. In this video, we'll remove bodies and components, remove features, and we'll create connector obstacles. In Fusion 360, we'll get started with the supplied dataset, Generative Suspension.f3d. This assembly has a chassis and wheels, as well as some suspension components that we want to take a look at, and we want to create ultimately a generative design for the lower A-arm. When we're dealing with suspension components, or really any design that moves, we have to keep in mind the full range of travel. If we move the wheel up and down, we can see that there is approximately two inches of suspension travel, and that really is going to have no effect on the geometry of our design. But as we move this up and down, we also have to note that the wheel rotates. And if we review this by going to our top view, and we move the wheel, we can see that we have a certain amount of rotation and that's going to affect the build area for our suspension design. So these are things that we always need to keep in mind before we start a generative design and we're working with assembly components. From here, let's navigate to our workspace picker and select generative design. Once we're in the generative design workspace, we're going to first begin by going to edit model. This allows us to remove bodies and components that aren't needed for our generative design study. We'll begin by first expanding our model components, and we'll take a look at the components we don't need. We don't need the chassis, or the wheel itself, or any of the ball joints. We won't need the upright, or we won't need the upper A-arm. We really only need to focus on the lower A-arm as well as the shock. So when we take a look at the components we need, it's going to be that lower A-arm and the original instance of the shock. We can start by selecting all of the components we don't need, right click and select remove. If there's anything that we need as a reference, we wanna make sure to keep it in the design for now, but for our purposes, we're gonna make sure that we remove everything but the lower A-arm and the shock. Once we do this, we're left with the original lower A-arm, which we can see here, and the shock, which contains multiple components. When we're working inside of edit model inside of our generative design workspace, you can see that we do have a timeline, but it is important to note that we no longer have the assembly joints. And this means that we need to use undo if we accidentally move anything. However, we do have the option to right click and ground our components so we don't accidentally move them, but you'll notice that it still allows us to move the shock components. And that's because these are sub components inside of our assembly. Just like in the design workspace, we will need to ground all components that we want to be stationary. If we want to have the A-arm stationary, we should do that as well. In this case, it really won't matter because we are going to be removing the A-arm, but for now, let's make sure that they are grounded so they don't accidentally move. Now that we've removed bodies, let's talk about the removal of features, and then we can get on to creating our preserve and our obstacle geometry. If we go to modify, we have a tool called remove features. This can be extremely handy by selecting a specific body and then taking a look at the slider to remove specific features. We also have manual selection. For example, if we wanted to get rid of the taper on both sides of this. Once we're happy with our selection, we can select delete and then close. You can see that we were able to remove a lot of the geometry and in this instance, I actually want to use modify and combine and put these two together. We're going to say OK, and now we've created one single body. Now, if we take a look, this is located inside of the lower shock and the upper shock no longer has anything in it. So I'm going to right click on the upper shock and select remove. Next, we want to focus on the creation of additional geometry to represent the spring. To do this, I'm going to select this face on the lower shock. I'm going to go to Create and Extrude. I didn't create a sketch, but I am able to simply drag this up. And I'm going to bring it all the way up to this bottom face. And this can be done by manually dragging it, by selecting the face to include it as a measurement, or by using the option To Object. To Object will create a parametric link if we happen to go back and adjust any of the dimensions. In this case, I want to join them together. This is going to create one single solid body that has a representation of the diameter of the spring. This is going to be important to help us avoid the spring. So we're going to assume that it's the diameter of the outside of the shock body, and now we have a single body that we can use as an obstacle. 
The next thing that we want to do is begin to create some preserved geometry. I'm going to do this by first selecting Create Sketch and selecting the outside face of the lower shock mount. We can zoom into this area with our scroll wheel and then select the circle tool or C on the keyboard. And I'm going to create a center diameter circle. And in this case, I'm going to finish the sketch and then we can use E on the keyboard or select extrude. I'm going to drag this in. And again, notice that we are using metric units and this file was originally designed in the inch unit system. So five millimeters doesn't quite get where we need to. We can always use our options to object and we can select the inside of the shock and we're going to use this as a new body. At any point in time, we can also change the units inside of edit model. These will not carry over from the design workspace. So if you're not using a single unit by default, for example, metric, you will need to adjust these each time. Now we want to create the geometry on the other side. This can be done by creating a mid plane or using a mid plane as a mirror. And because we have our model components and our construction, we already have a plane in use. So this means that we can go to create and mirror. And instead of using faces, we're going to use mirror bodies. We're going to expand our bodies folder and select body one that was just created. Now we have a body for the left and the right hand side of the shock. In this case, when this was a sheet metal design, that can be relatively thin. But if we want to adjust some of the parameters, for example, make this a bit thicker, we can always go back and edit the original, set it to two sides, and then we can make it a little bit thicker on the other side, adding minus 0.25. Because we're dealing with a mirror, and this happens in the timeline before the mirror, you can see that they are thicker on both sides. While this isn't necessary, it can be helpful to consider these things at this time. Next, I want to go ahead and create a preserve that includes the area for our ball joint to mount. Once again, I don't need to create a sketch because I have a face that I can use for a selection. I'm going to rotate this around and move it up. Then for my distance, I'm going to set this to object. I'm going to create a new body. And once again, this is going to represent the preserved geometry for the ball joint. The last thing that we need to do is rotate this around and bring it to the middle of our screen. And we're going to have to create some preserved geometry that represents the area where our weld fitting goes to thread in our ball joints and our heim joints. So in order to do this, I will want to create a sketch or once again, we can use extrude if we simply want to copy the tubing diameter. Again, it really depends on your specific design, but in this case, I'm going to use extrude. I'm going to select the end face of both of these cylinders. You'll notice that it doesn't let me do this as it would if I were dealing with a sketch. So that's one area where a sketch would be beneficial because it would let us extrude them at the same time. I'm simply going to drag this back a distance of two inches, create it as a new body and say, OK. From here, I'm going to select my lower A arm, right click and remove it. Then I want to go to create mirror and I want to mirror this body to the other side. When we select our mirror plane, I want to make sure that I use that mid construction plane and say OK. At this point, what we've done is we've created all of the areas that we need to retain and we have an obstacle for our shock. What we don't have is an obstacle for the wheel itself. So this is something that we do need to create. We're going to start by selecting the top face of our ball joint part. We're going to use a new sketch. I'll begin by sketching a couple lines. First, I'm going to sketch a line that goes vertically. And then we're going to come back and we're going to add a midpoint relation. And I'm going to simply draw two more lines. And if you draw any extra lines, make sure you go back and do delete those. And then we're going to select each of these. And then the center point, we're going to use our midpoint constraint. We're going to repeat that process, making sure that all three lines are at the midpoint. Then we're going to use our equal constraint to make sure all three of these are equal in length. And then we're going to use our dimension tool and we're going to set these to 35 degrees. 35 degrees represents the amount of travel the wheel will have in this orientation. So now that we have them set to 35 degrees, we also need to account for the overall height. We're going to assume 28 inches, which will account for the rim and tire size. The next thing that I want to do is I'm going to use some lines and arcs to finish this off so I can use it as an obstacle. 
I'm going to create a three point arc between these two and allow it to have a tangency. Then I'll use my line tool to go from this endpoint and simply finish off this shape. If you make a selection at the end and an arc gets added, simply delete it and then manually drag that endpoint to finish the constraint. There are times when we often make misclicks or misselections, and we simply need to be able to identify those on the screen quickly and easily. The next thing that I want to do is use extrude, and I'm going to take all of these separate areas, and we're going to select the center part as well. We could have made all of these lines construction lines, which would remove the need to select all these areas, but in this instance, we can go ahead and just select them all. I'm going to drag this up a distance of eight inches, making sure that I am creating a new body, and we're going to do this as two sides. I'm going to drag it down a distance of eight inches as well. The last thing that we're going to do is we're going to come into our modify tools and select shell. Selecting the inside of this and giving it a quarter inch value, we're going to say OK. What we've done here is we've created an obstacle that maintains the sweep of the wheel and we've left it hollow to allow us to build inside of that area. We need to be mindful of the actual area that we have to build, so this is where understanding the size of the rim in the tire is extremely helpful. Making that a quarter inch is just way too thin. I actually need to make it a bit thicker, maybe something like two inches to account for a rim and tire. Again, it depends on the overall size of the wheel, but this will give us a good build area to work with. At this point, we still need to make a connector obstacle, which can be relatively simple by using the connector obstacle tool. We're going to select one side of the shock mount, and for the end of shaft, we'll select the other side. Then we'll allow it to create a bolt head on both sides, and then we'll have tool clearance on both sides as well. We'll set the tool clearance a bit further to make sure that we can access it from the outside. And I'm going to go all the way to the tire representation and say OK. From here, when we finish edit model, we can come back and select our obstacle geometry, which will include the shock. And then we can select our preserved geometry, which will include the shock mounts. And it'll include the ball joint, as well as the two mounts for our weld nuts. If we have to go back and add any selections, such as the tire, we can always go back to our obstacle geometry and simply add those. One last piece of the puzzle is we want to make sure that we have obstacles inside of the areas where our ball joints are going to go, as well as inside of the area where any other hardware is going to be. So this is a great chance to go back into edit model and use that obstacle connector to make those obstacles before moving on to the next step. As always, make sure that you do save the file often, that way you don't lose any work and we can always revert back to an older version.